my presentation today is more than just a science. It's more a, a call to arms. And our call to arms is for our future. The future is not for me. I've been in the past, and I had the opportunity to look forward. And I've seen the future. I've lived the future. I, I hope to live a few years more, too. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the future is really for... Jackson and Jenna. So, I have three areas I'm going to talk about quickly. Uh, major preventable chronic diseases, physical activity, exercise, and health. And what's in the future for our children? How many of you worried about health care costs? I am. If you don't put your hand up, I am. I'm worried about health care costs. I'm over 65 years of age right now. And as you get older, as uh, uh, my fr uh, friend, uh, Professor Niher, uh, I, I, I'm very close with that, but, but my apologies, uh, said um, that if you're in your 60s, you can still go. I was glad to hear that because I'm still going. I'm still going. But if we look at national medical costs in the United States in billions of dollars, for, uh, two, 2003 uh, dollars, look at smoking. It adds $75 billion to health care costs. Physical inactivity, $76 billion, more than smoking. Poor nutrition is 36, and obesity is 61. In the United States, we could take care of our health care costs by becoming more physically active, but we are not physically active. Only 30% of the population in the United States are physically active. I'm not going to tell you that physical activity cures diseases. In some cases, as we get older, it makes it, perhaps makes it worse if we're running marathons when we're 75 years of age. Uh, uh, so maybe I'll keep my, my running down under 40 kilometers. Uh, uh, but uh, but what, what I want to say is, this is given to me by Frank Booth uh, almost 18 years ago, just diseases we knew then that uh, are not necessarily prevented, but are hampered or put back in our life if we remain physically active starting when we're very young. And that is the key to the presentation today, becoming active when we're young and carrying that activity throughout our lifetime. I'm going to show you a series of slides in the next minute uh, or two uh, relative to uh, chronic diseases. Uh, and there's a hidden trend that I'm not going to speak about at the end, but I'm going to ask you to help me look at that hidden trend. Uh, the first one is uh, cardiovascular disease. And let's just look at the United States right here. And uh, the, up here, the blue represents 2002, the red 2010, and the green are the projections for 2030. I love to show this to young uh, undergraduate students uh, and, and tell them there is a future for you in clinical exercise physiology. That future is, in the United States, heart disease is going to get worse. It's not going to get better, at least if we keep going the way we are. Well, if you look closely, same thing's happening in Brazil. See what's happening in your home country of Germany. And look what's happening in China. It is getting worse. The, it's not the only reason, but physical inactivity is a reason for that. As I said a moment ago, I'm not going to try and convince you that physical activity will cure everything. I don't believe it does, but I think it will prolong the onset uh, 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 so that we can live a happier uh, uh, life. Let's look more closely at this. Let's look at type 2 diabetes. We see exactly the same trends as in the United States, in Brazil, something seems to be happening here in Germany, and, and China. The disease progression is going to get worse. You might be doing something right here in Germany, I don't know. Obesity. United States, Brazil, the trend is the same. And if we look at cancer, the trend is the same throughout the world. If you're planning to be a clinical exercise physiologist, I've got a job for you. If you're planning on being a heart surgeon, I have a job for you. And as I just learned, uh, if you're going to be an orthopedic surgeon, I probably have a job for you as well. All right? All right, what is that hidden trend? Who saw the hidden trend? that I have not spoken much about. I mentioned it once. What's happening in Germany? The trend is not as great in Germany. I presented this information. It's from the World Health Organization. Uh, four years ago, in, uh, three years ago, I'm sorry, in Jakarta. And I said, you know, I, I don't know what's going on in Germany, but whatever they're doing, I'm going to have, I want a piece of that action. 
Uh, they're doing something right over there. And there was a young lady in the audience in the middle of my presentation who raised her hand. It turns out it's a friend of mine. It's a friend of yours. Gundred, I had to write it down so I could remember to say it right. Gundred, Gundred Dahl Temper. I think many of you may know her. She uh, uh, has a lot to do with sports uh, and physical education here in Germany. She's in Berlin. And what she said to me, she said, Larry, in front of 700 people, the reason that uh, the trends aren't as great in Germany is because we still require our children to be physically active in school. They are still required to take physical activity. Well, I was thinking there, you know, I'm pretty competitive about these things. I didn't say anything to her. But I went back and talked to a couple of my friends. I said, don't we require physical education in, uh, in public schools in the United States? And the answer was from my good friend Kim Garvey that only schools in one state, Illinois, and the District of Columbia meet the national recommendations for physical education. Only one state and the District of Columbia meet those recommendations. The recommendations are set for every state. Only one meets it. Not even South Carolina. Not even my other home state of Ohio. Well, let's look at the physical activity patterns throughout the world for our, our children. And as we can see, this represents women, uh, young ladies, uh, ages uh, 11 through 17. And what this represents is that less 70% don't meet the 60-minute requirement of moderate to vigorous physical activity in the United States. It gets worse in other countries. Russia, it's closer to 90%. Do not meet. It's not 90% meet. Do not meet. You can see where Germany is in there. They're right there with the United States in terms of getting 60%. Well, you can see the same trends. The trends aren't so severe for, for uh, young men. They, they are getting maybe a little more activity than women, but the trends are still there. They're not physically active enough. Well, we've talked about diseases of adults. Let's talk a bit about uh, diseases of children. Uh, the incidence of cancer and mortality, I'm embarrassed to say this in the world, they're getting higher. This represents what's going on in the United States. It's not a huge... Uh, 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 trend, but there is a trend here for cancer to increase in our children in the United States. What I am proud about is if we look at uh, the survival rate of those children, once they're diagnosed, uh, the survival rate is greater. So we, we are applying the technology, we are doing the things, but uh, I'm more concerned why is it happening? Why is it happening? I don't have an answer for that, by the way. If we look at uh, 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 diabetes, uh, you know, uh, Type 1 diabetes has always been around uh, and probably will always remain. But we used to call it type 2 diabetes or, or uh, adult onset diabetes. We now call it type 2 diabetes. And that concerns me because adult onset diabetes happened as we got older. It happened maybe when we got to be over 70, so I wouldn't be in that category quite yet. But, uh, but it's happening in greater amounts in our children, greater amounts. Why? Well, probably because of obesity. And uh, you heard me say more than once in the last five minutes, six minutes, that uh, I'm a pretty competitive guy. I'm competing right now, not against anybody else. I'm competing against myself. I want to give you the best presentation that I can possibly give, all right? And I'm embarrassed by this, because I'm going to say we're number one. The United States is number one, 39% of our children are overweight or have obesity in the United States. Well, where's Germany? You're down here. Again, Germany is doing something good. I'd like to be number 36 or something. I'd like to be at the bottom of this list, but we're not. We're not. You, you are close to the bottom. Keep it up. Let's just talk a minute about physical activity, exercise, and health. I was very pleased. Uh, uh, I did a sabbatical a number of years ago at Stanford University. I got to work with probably one of the greatest exercise physiologists that 
in, of, of our time. I mean, Michael Pollack and Peter Raven are, are another examples of two people that I've worked with, but I work with a guy named Bill Haskell from uh, Stanford University. If you know anything about cardiovascular disease, Bill Haskell's uh, and exercise are, are synonymous. Uh, Bill made the uh, 1992 Wolf Lecture uh, at the American College of Sports Medicine. In that lecture, uh, he presented data relative to low physical activity, low fitness levels, all the way to high fitness, high physical activities. And if we looked at the relative risk of coronary heart disease mortality, we see that as you become more fit or as you increase your physical activity, that relative risk goes down. Those were relatively new data at the time. Now you open up any journal and there's uh, something talking about the same kinds of things. 25 years ago, uh, Bill Haskell presented this information. Uh, if we look at what's happening, uh, we, we talked, uh, uh, heard a few minutes ago uh, some comments relative as we get older. What happens to our body as we get older in terms of functional capacity? Uh, we see that uh, our, uh, an indicator such as V.O2 max uh, uh, goes down with age. And this is for an inactive individual, a sedentary individual. After we turn the age of 20, uh, it starts to go down. Well, um, I'm pleased to say that I'm a good friend with Mickey, and Mickey still exercises, and I still exercise. Um, maybe not like I used to, but I still exercise. Uh, uh, my V.02 is actually uh, right up here, around uh, just uh, right at 70 mLs per kg per minute. Uh, and this is not necessarily mine, but uh, this is an active adult. Look how that stays up. And then what happens, I found after I turned the age of 60, my physical activity patterns changed. As for many people, I'm not sure what's magic about 60. But I'm more important that you look at this functional reserve out here and this functional reserve out here. It's much greater by being physically active throughout your, your lifetime. Uh, if we look at uh, what many people want, it's when I turn the age of... Uh, 40 and I haven't been physically active, can I gain some of those benefits? And the answer is yes, represented by the black line here. You can increase your functional reserve capacity and likely reduce your uh, risk for uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, as we look at quality of life, uh, we have two patterns here, those who are inactive and those who are active, and quality of life uh, out here to the end. Uh, is maintained at a much higher rate. I used to be really concerned when I was a very young man about how long I was going to live. And in part, uh, uh, that was why I became an exercise scientist. Uh, in part, I was also interested in why I couldn't run faster than 49 seconds in a quarter mile. Uh, but I, I soon lost interest in running 49 second quarter mile, I'm more interested about living longer. And now I'm more interested not in terms of living longer, but the quality of life that I live. And we know that if you are 40 years of age and you start to become physically active, that you will also gain some of those uh, uh, benefits. Now, as I head down the, the end of my presentation here, I, I, I just point out the U.S. Uh, physical activity guidelines. They are not different than the guidelines that you see for any major country in the world. They're all very similar. They make recommendations for adults and children. You've heard me quote the 60 minutes uh, uh, daily for uh, children. I just want to talk about our future, about our children's future. This is a study done uh, recently in 2010 by Eklund, and they looked at moderate to vigorous physical activity and sedentary time and cardiometabolic uh, risk factors in children and adolescents. And what they found already, two things. What they found, the first thing is that people who spent a lot of time being physically inactive already had higher levels of uh, fasting insulin, f higher uh, triglyceride levels, and to some degree, lower HDL cholesterol. Uh, but as you went from low to middle to high uh, in terms of uh, tertiles, uh, we saw that uh, fasting uh, insulin levels uh, were lower, uh, fasting triglycerides were level, and HDL cholesterols uh, rose some, somewhat. So the point I wanted to say is that we are not only seeing increase in chronic diseases, but we're seeing the metabolic uh, risk factors associated with those diseases in our children because they are not physically active. Physical activity is important for them. As I end now, as my red light started to blink a minute or two ago, I know I'm watching my time, uh, I was told that uh, I was the last thing between you and lunch and not to get in your way. Uh, so uh, I won't, but I will tell you this, or ask you this, 
what do you want for your future? What do you want for your children's future? This, and yes, there's a picture of the United States children. There's a child from Germany and a child from China. We don't think of the people from China looking like this, but they are getting heavier and heavier, as are the children in the United States. Or do you want this? Do you want them out there being physically active? Do you ever watch children play? They play real hard, they rest. They play real hard, they rest. They play real hard, they rest. What in the world is that? Mickey and I talked about that last night. It's something called HIT, High Intensity Interval Training. And no one's coaching them, they just do it. That's what I want my ch grandchildren to do. My boys already did that. They were good soccer players, good golfers. There's not much hit going on with golfing, but uh, other than <laughs> hitting a golf ball. Uh, but uh, let's bring back more physical activity into the lives of our children. Let's help them reduce their risk of, of disease later in their life. Let's help them increase the quality of their life. Thank you.